up those TCG here and welcome to another TCG video on my channel. Today we are gonna play with Zygarde Florgus, which is the deck I featured in last week's episode. So if you wanna learn more about this deck in particular, definitely check the video which is in the description below. So Zygarde is all about pure force here. We are uh, using the Might here with Core Enforcer, dealing 150 damage. And uh, why are we able to do that for only two attachments? Well, uh, because we have Florgus. That way we can ignore the fairy energy that uh, the Zygarde needs to use Core Enforcer. Which choice band we can add it up to 180 for two attachment with max elixir and dce we really have some consistency and uh, if there's a zygarde that got uh, that gets knocked out we can have another one ready in uh, no time we also have a 2-2-1 line of the zoroark break in here file play helps out in a lot of situations so uh, why not put it in here uh, we do run darkness energies and uh, dce so uh, this also uh, works with mind jack and stand in with flowstone it's just the our way to getting out of the active position we run a super odd in here you could uh argue between rescue stretcher and super odd but as mentioned in the episode uh, super odd is a little bit better since uh, we are discarding uh, energies with the attack core enforcer there are two tapu Lele in here uh, you can add out of three copies if you want but you want to have that first turn bridges if you have first turn bridges you can get out a couple of flabebe and also uh, maybe a zorwar and uh, that all depends that's why there's also one nazbal in here maybe add it up to two if you want but i prefer one evo soda and a deck like this because evolution is important we want to have florgas out as quickly as possible so that's why it's in here uh, for the rest it's pretty standard, we have uh, 2 Guzma, 4 N, 4 Sycamore, uh, just like always, and then 4 Ultra Ball. So we're gonna test this deck out on TCG Online and see if it actually works out as, uh, yeah, I actually stated it does. So let's just check out what opponent waits us on the other side of the world because Zygar Fergus is uh, yeah, one of those decks that only gives up one prize attackers unless they are knocking out Tapu Lelis, but yeah. We're just gonna see, we're facing a Carlos Fire Darkness Lightning deck. So that is interesting to see here. I uh, don't really know what opponent, uh, yeah, what the opponent will be playing. Hopefully he's uh, having a, a skilled and competitive deck here. So we are gonna go first because we are uh, yeah, a setup deck. We cannot attack on the first turn anyhow. So we start with Zygarde, of course, because we do run three copies. So uh, starting with Zygarde is no surprise here. So this will be the ideal situation here to get it going straight from the bat. We have Ultra Ball as well. Uh, the bad thing is that we don't have a consistency card to follow up with that, but uh, yeah, we're yeah, consistency card here is uh, the Sycamore. So the thing we can do here is uh, attach a regular energy to flo uh, actually the Zygarde here and use the Ultra Ball. We can get rid of Evo Soda, but I don't want to do that since we do have the uh, ability here to get ourselves uh, Bridget here. If there's a, uh, yeah, Tapu Lele in here, Tapu Lele is in there. There's one prize though. We have Bridget in the, in the deck as well. I see that there is uh, one choice band prize, so that is unfortunate. Also, one darkness energy is prized. And what else do we see? Uh, when looking through the deck, I do think, yeah, those are in there. So at least one Zoroark is prized and one Zorowa. So uh, we have to be careful here. We definitely want to get our, our Zoroark as quickly as possible. So we are gonna slap down our Tapu Lele, which is the thing we always want to do here, is trying to get that first turn bridges. So that's why there's two Tapu Lele and our four Ultra Ball. If you want to add it up to three Tapu Lele, that's fine. But I couldn't find the room because we do run a stage uh, two in here as well as a stage one. So we're gonna get out a Fla, yeah, a Fla Baby, uh, maybe another one. But then again, if he spreads around damage, maybe we could be in trouble. Uh, yeah, I'm also gonna get out the Zorua definitely and uh, another Fla Baby here just because. Sometimes you they try and knock out your flood baby before it evolves into this Florgus. So for now, we're just gonna get out those. We do have uh, the Evo Soda in the hand to evolve one of those. So I don't think we uh, are in a bit of a trouble here. If he uses the flying flip twice, those flood babies will be knocked out. But we do have a terrific hand to follow up with our first turn. So we'll see what the opponent will do. 20 damage on everything will be huge though because there's a lot of things here. Uh, we have the Zorwa only having 60 HP and the Flambeo is only 40. And uh, yeah, having 20 damage on Tapu Lele makes it easy to knock out uh, next turn. So, looks like we are facing an Eveltal deck. It's been a while since we've uh, faced Eveltal. Eveltal is a great deck. But the problem is that, uh, yeah, Gardevoir is around and it pretty much destroys, actually does the exact same thing like Evel Ball, but way better. So that's why, uh, yeah, the uh, Eveltal decks just got fizzled out when Burning Shadows got released. So a lot of energy is coming out on this EV. So it looks like he will be able to get out an Umbreon as uh, early as turn one, which is uh, really great to see here with two Max Elixirs. And then follow up with a Sycamore. So this is an Umbreon spread damage deck with Eveltal. So uh, really nice to see here the creativity that certain people have. So they are still playing Darkness. So this is a Darkness matchup. 
a 90 damage will not be able to one shot our Zygar, but at least we'll get 30 damage, yeah, on uh, one of our flat babies. Okay, first things first, we're gonna evolve into uh, the Zorwark here. We can also use the uh, Evo Soda here in this situation to get out uh, one of our Floets here. This Floet does have 70 HP, which is great, which will help us out quite a bit. So I'm gonna evolve. Yeah, this guy, maybe we can have a little bit of luck if we can have a, a rare candy uh, next turn. But we do have to use Sycamore here, so hopefully we can get something great. And we have a Nesball and yeah, another one of those that we can bench, not that we need it. Okay, we can get out our Z another Zygarde next turn, but this Zygarde cannot attack, which is such a shame to see here. We can uh, sacrifice it, but that's not something I want to do here. So in a situation like this, this one will get knocked out soon. So let's just get some reinforcements going on. Let's get out another Zoroark. Or actually, it's not a Zoroark. It's a, yeah, a Zygarde. And uh, let's just slap an energy, maybe onto Zoroark. That way we can uh, copy the attack that he used on us with Zoroark break. Maybe that is a nice situation here. Could also attach one, but that way we don't have the certainty. We're just going to attach an energy to Zoroark. And leave it at that. This is the only thing we could have done here because we don't drew into the DCE, which was needed to get ourselves uh, yeah, some damage on the field. The good thing is that uh, he will not be able to one shot our Floet. Next turn, we do have the evolution here ready to rock and roll. Actually, do we need it? That is the question I'm asking myself since we are uh, planning on attacking with Zoro Bark. Maybe we can do something else here. So Shadow Bullet will get 30 damage onto, yeah, the Flababy once again. Or actually, it's the Floet already. He, he evolved. Let's just get our Zoroark. Let's not mess around with this guy. Uh, we have a Max Electro that at least comfortable to know to get an energy onto our Zygarde. Bang. What else is there that we can do? We can use an N. That way he only has... Yeah, a couple of cards in the hand, but maybe the better strategy here is getting rid of those. Actually, the, an N would be better here. So I am going to get rid of the Sycamore. Next turn, we are going to end so that the opponent does have a few less cards in the hand. We can get out our Florgus. That is something we can do. How much retreat cost does the Zoroark have? Two retreat cost. So definitely going to get out that Zoroark break now. That way we ensure that we can get some decent damage on the field here. We can also get rid of all his energies, Energies that could be the case here. Uh, we are going to use the N. Hopefully we draw into something good here. We draw into the DCE, an energy, float stone, so we can try and attack with something else here. Maybe attack with Zygarde, could be fun. To keep our uh, Zoroark, mm, what are we going to do? Definitely going to attach that DCE onto Zygarde. Don't get out the uh, evolution of Floet, which is unfortunate. Florgus did not show his face this turn. But at least we can use Foul Play and choose one of the attacks. We can do 90 damage or we can use Dark Call GX. In this GX method, we can discard two energies. That way the opponent will not be able to respond. But then again, yeah, maybe we can just use Shadow Bullet. That Umbreon is, however, the biggest threat on the field. And with 30 damage on this guy, we can even one-shot it with Land Crush. So that at least is comfortable to see. Okay, another Max Legs are coming down. Tapu. Coco. This Fluet is in some serious danger here. He will be one-shot it soon enough. But we do, however, have some more rare candies in the deck. There are at least two, two rare candies left. And uh, wow, we see an Acerola. Which means our damage was in vain. So at least comfortable to know that if we did not use the uh, attack Dark Call GX, that would have been a waste of the GX move. So uh, yeah, we're do we do face the Tapu Koko now. And Flying Flip will get rid of our Fluet. So at least he gets one prize card once again. And we're back to square one. Okay. Let's see here. Floatstone and N. I think N is the best play for now. Also gonna slap down um, a DCE onto Tapulele. Tapulele could help us out later on. 
field blower. Nah, I'm just gonna end the opponent. That way he only has four cards left in his hand and we can demolish him next turn. Okay, we have the super rod. Super rod came back, came back uh, a darkness energy or a side guard. Not that we need it. Although this flip baby is looking really scary here. Not having a lot of HP left. We can use Max Elixir this turn or wait. I'm actually gonna use it this turn, that way we don't draw into it. Not that it matters, we didn't got anything out of it. And now it's time to use Foul Play to use 100 damage. We can retreat into Zygarde. That way we still have some more options left. Zygarde can even destroy this guy with ease. So we're gonna swap around. Zor Zorwark gives us more consistency, so that's what I'm doing here. The consistency of Zoroark is really important. If he benches an Evelto, we can strike the Evelto with the same amount of damage with Eval Ball. That we can that way we can copy. So that's what I'm doing here, saving our Zoroark break. And we do see this uh, Umbreon GX, which might cause a little bit of trouble if he uses the Dark Call GX. That way our Zygarde is stuck and he can snipe the following turn after that. But we do have Guzma left in the deck. Two of them. So at least we're comfortable here. Ultra Ball, do predict the Tapu Lele here. Tapu Lele will get himself a fresh hand with Sycamore. Unless, yeah, oh, it's a Tauros. A Tauros here, no Tapu Lele inside. So this is a different build here. Maybe his uh, Tapu Lele is priced, which is awesome to hear because, uh, yeah, if he got that Tapu Lele out, he may, might have done something else. So Sycamore here, getting himself the DC to get the knockout. Too bad. Flowstone got knocked off. That Tauros might cause some troubles. But at least he will not get the KO here on the Zygarde. Shadow Bullet, 90 and 30. And there goes another one of our Flabebes. We do have a low amount of HP. Okay, what's next? Go Zorwa. We are gonna... Let's see here, 90 damage, 100, 120. We are gonna give an energy to... Ah, uh, I guess that Lele. Gonna use the Super Rod here because we did lose a lot of resources. Gonna get back Flip Baby. Uh, maybe another energy here. Zygarde could help out, but without those Fluettes on the field, or actually the uh, Evolutions, the Florgas, things will not work out at all. Okay, and now we end the opponent once again. There we go. And now we get the two Florgas. Now that we don't need him anymore. Whatever, at least we have the choice band. That way we can uh, start hitting some damage. We're gonna stand in here. Oof. And with the stand in, we can use foul play to copy any attack. In this situation, I'm comfortable to use the Dark Call GX. That way the opponent does not have a single energy on his field. And we're kind of safe. Maybe for a couple of turns, even. And if he starts to attack me, I maybe can Guzma out this one and uh, do some uh, crazy shenanigans. So only one energy, using some damage. Strafe will deal 30 damage and get him himself switched on to Tauros. Not that it matters, we're gonna use Gosma anyhow. Get over here, don't run away from us. And now we're gonna promote Zygarde, whatever. Zygarde can deal 80 damage. And then we can finish it off with, yeah, whatever. We're gonna stand in here. Oof. And now, foul play. Let's see. Shadow Bullet, 90 and 30. Of course. Bang! Wow, what a crazy matchup indeed. I've never seen a deck with Umbreon and Evelta on Thoros make it on the TCG Online program after Burning Shadows. But uh, yeah, this guy proved me wrong here. He's gonna deal 90 damage, which is just enough to knock out our Zorwark break. An end for 5 cards. Great. And we see a Turtonator out of nowhere coming onto the field. He will, uh, however, get another prize card here and 30 damage again on Zygarde. But at least all his energies are almost in the discard here, which is awesome. So this match 
is pretty secure. Let's just promote. Yeah, we can promote Tapu Lele in this situation. I don't think he will get a knockout out of, out of nowhere, so we're gonna promote Tapu Lele. And now we can get ourselves La Bebe back on the field for next turn using the Rare Candy Evolution Sun. Yeah, let's just get rid of that Potan while we still can. Ultra Ball could help us out, but for now, Energy Drive will be enough damage to get ourselves two more prize cards. Poof! There we go, two more prize cards. So we're closing in the game here. He only has three cards and uh, I don't think he will be able to respond with something crazy. Even a Mad Bull GX with a DCE will not get the KO, so that's crazy. And uh, he already used two DC, so he would have needed that DCE and a Choice Band, so maybe promoting Zygarde would have been better, but I want to keep my Zygarde to get the one-hit KOs that I so desperately want. And this Terminator looks like he will not be able to do anything. Maybe he can use Wonder Tag, Cosmo something out. I don't know. If he uses Shell Trap, we cannot attack it without receiving damage counters, so that is not great. There's another Sycamore. He does have Tapu Lele, which was kind of strange to see. This Turdinator, I don't get this Turdinator. He uses only for the Fire type. He does, however, need only the, it only needs a DCE to get, use the Shell Trap, and he has that D Choice Band onto Tapu Lele using Sycamore once again. Do we have another end in the deck? We need to end this guy. We do have, an, have another end, but is it in the deck? I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, Max Alexa coming down on nobody. Will this... No, he does not use Shell Trap, which is great to hear. We can Guzma out this guy and knock it out, which is awesome. So, first things first, gonna evolve into Zoroark. Got, finally gonna get my Florgas out after a bazillion turns. Okay, what else can we do here? We have an Ultra Ball. Guzma would be great to knock this guy out. Because we do, however, deal 150 damage, which is enough. So maybe that is the, the best call here. Zorwar could also attack, Ultra Ball, whatever. Let's use the Core Enforcer. Thanks to Florgus, we can finally use that attack and get ourselves two more prize cards. So things are looking up here. We have Choice Band and another Tapu Lele, so this will be huge to see. If he knocks out our Zygarde, we will be in a rough situation. He only needs one more prize card after he knocks out a Zygarde. So Potown gets back in field, so this is a great matchup. I don't know if we can win this guys, but we will do our best. So we see Espeon EX coming onto the field. Another Tapu Lele here, probably gonna use the M. Because that way we only get one more one card. Or maybe he's gonna use another Sycamore. Let's check his discard. What options are there? He does have Ninja Boy, so this is an interesting deck indeed. He's gonna use the M, as suspected. Bringing us down to only one card. And slapping everything down so he don't doesn't draw into them. Maybe he can use something else. I don't know. Do predict an end. And this end will be the most crucial thing of the match. A really close game. Really glad that I got to stream it. Which is awesome. And now we see a whole lot of things going down. Hopefully he doesn't draw into DCE. Otherwise, we might be in a tough situation and we do draw in one energy. He does draw the DCE, so we're kind of screwed. Okay. We are kind of in a pickle. This stuff will really is annoying. Okay, hopefully we draw into Choice Band or something that we need. Maybe Sycamore. And we draw into... Nothing at all. This guy can deal 130 damage, which is not enough, so hopefully... Ah, man. We can attach another energy, but that, that will not help at all. I'm gonna give an energy to... 
Let's see. Do we have another Tapu Lele in the deck and two Ultra Balls? So I'm gonna keep the energy in the hand for now. We do, however, have two DCs left in the deck. Two Ultra Ball, two Sycamore. So the chances of us pulling something next turn is really high. Ah, man, this is all or nothing. He can deal 130 damage. If he gets another energy, we're screwed. So we're just gonna hope for the best. I cannot promise you guys that we will win this matchup, but you saw how the deck functions, which is fine by me. So what does he draw? Does he have the energy? Hopefully he does not have the energy and we can still... Oh, DC, so we're totally screwed. So anyway, this was the video for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed me playing with Zygarde Florgus. Definitely check it out. We did not get out Florgus in time, but I definitely showed you that it is capable of dealing a lot of damage when you get out Florgus and using Zygarde. Even Zoroark showed a lot of effort here. So anyways, thanks again for watching our TCG video on my channel. If you enjoyed it, destroy the like button as always. You know I always appreciate that. And I will see you guys soon enough with more TCG videos. I'm out. Peace.